Sri Mataji Nimala Devi, grandmother, scholar and freedom fighter. As a child, she lived in Gandhi's ashram. As a student, she studied medicine, and as the cry for freedom swept India, she fought for her nation's independence. The year 1970 brought about her most important role, the discovery and development of Sahaja Yoga, a movement which is now spreading worldwide. Sahaja Yoga is a science of integration, which results in man's mental, physical and spiritual well-being. The union of mind, heart and spirit is achieved through the working of a subtle energy system within each one of us. That we are not this body, this mind, these conditionings, this ego, but we are the spirit. You don't have to accept what I'm saying blindly, because blind faith leads to fanaticism. But as scientist you must keep your mind open and see for yourself what I am saying. If it is so, honestly you must accept it. In today's society this subtle energy system, which has its origins in the very roots of our being, has been neglected. It is out of balance. Today's physical and psychological diseases are gross expressions of a subtle system in dire need of repair and nourishment. Our collective desire for peace and rejuvenation is a yearning coming from deep within. It is a reflection of our internal condition. We know so much through science about our civilization, our advancement. This is the advancement of a tree which has grown outside very much. But if we do not know our roots, we will be destroyed. So it is important to know about our roots. Within each individual, the subtle energy system or subtle body is divided into three channels, right, left and center. The right side channel corresponds to the right sympathetic chain of the autonomic nervous system and left hemisphere of the brain, while the left side connects with the right hemisphere of the brain and corresponds to the left sympathetic chain. If a person suffers a stroke in the right lobe of the brain, it is commonly known that the left side of the body becomes affected. In line with the opinion of psychologists, Sahaja Yoga identifies the right hemisphere of the brain as being responsible for the functions of lateral, artistic and expressive thinking. Those functions traditionally believed to be more predominant in females. The left hemisphere corresponds to functions of linear, computational and mathematical logic, traditionally considered to be the predominant brain activity of males. Dr. Carl Gustav Jung, well-known analytical psychologist, identified the left and right sides as the anima and the anime, with the collective unconscious lying in the central channel. Through his studies, he observed that for every woman there is a masculine aspect within her psyche, the archetype of the animus, and for every man a feminine counterpart, the anima. Jung was always aware of the imbalance in Western culture in favour of the masculine, seen in the preference for logic, analysis and external achievement. These are all triumphs for the masculine side or right side of the psyche within all human beings. The right side channel also provides us with the energy needed to plan, act, analyze and project. On the physical level, it corresponds to our liver and pancreas. This power of action moves on the right side 
of the spinal cord and coming to the optic chasm, it crosses over, passes to the left side <coughs> and creates an institution called ego. The institution of ego is a myth. What we do is to get something dead, like some trees dead, so make some platform or some furniture. We take some stones and make a hall and we think we have done a great job. Actually what we have done is to reconstruct the dead. But while doing it, we get the feeling that we have done it something. That is how our ego develops. <coughs> this channel on the right-hand side caters to your future. So those people who plan too much, think too much, exhaust the energy of the center because the center has the first responsibility to convert the fat cells in the stomach for the use of the brain which is overused, to make them into grey cells. So when you start thinking too much, it has to work more for this very important function. When it starts working for one function, the other functions are neglected. And the other functions are, it has to cater, to nourish or to give energy to your liver, to your pancreas, to your spleen, to your kidneys and part of your intestine. <coughs> Western medicine has followed the path of the right side of pulling apart, dissecting and analyzing with little regard for the whole working mechanism of the human being. Of course when you neglect your liver, you know liver is, they say, you will live till your liver will allow. Now this liver has to clean all the poison from your body. It comes out as heat and is delivered to the bloodstream. But when this is neglected, this poor liver doesn't know how to function without the energy and all the heat is accumulated in the liver. So a person suffers from liver trouble. Now the symptoms are he gets migraine, he cannot see the sun, then also he gets very hot-tempered, irritable, angry, because there is so much of heat. Then this heat passes. I was telling in Canberra, most of the bureaucrats have this problem because they plan too much. And where do we land with that planning, God alone knows. So, then this heat, passes upward and downward. So when it passes downward, it gives you a very bad problem of terrible constipation because the heat constricts your intestine, large intestines. It also coagulates your kidneys, by which you have kidney trouble, you cannot pass your urine. Then you go on the dialysis and you are certified as really dead because you cannot last longer. It's a very expensive treatment, but doctors do not tell you frankly that, oh, you are not going to live. Then this heat can pass upward. And when it goes upward, it goes, say, to your right heart as shown there. As a result of that, you develop asthma. Of course, asthma is connected also with the left side. So when there's triggering done by the left side, then you get this horrible disease called asthma. Then this heat can go upward and can 
ruin your throat. It can freeze your right arm. It can make your left eye red and also your left ear deaf. But by chance, if such a person is young and using too much physical energy and mental energy, as well as drinking a lot, he can have a very fatal heart attack, a very massive one, and he may die very early in age. You must know that all such attacks at a young age always are fatal. But when you see to the other side is that there is a pancreas which is neglected. As a result of the neglect of the pancreas, you develop a disease called diabetes. Even the mothers who are extremely planning type and thinking type give that disease to their children. And children are born with diabetes. Then you have the third problem with the spleen. This is the most dangerous one. Nowadays, as the life is, we are all time-bound, very particular about time. As a result of that, we have become extremely hectic. Supposing you sleep very late in the night, then you have to get up early in the morning somehow, somehow get into your clothes and run to the office. Don't even take your breakfast, your wife will give you. So on the way in the car you are eating your breakfast, and then you read the newspaper. You get a shock of your life because so many horrible things are happening. Newspapers will never give something that is good or is doing well, but something that has gone wrong to give a sensational feeling. <laughs> it gives you sometimes horrible things. So early in the morning if you read something horrible, being a human being you are sometimes shocked. Then you find there is a jam on the way and you get so upset and all your peace is disturbed. Now this spleen is responsible for creating red blood corpuscles when you are in emergency. You must have seen when you eat your food and you run, you get a pain here. That's because your spleen is trying to pump out new RBCs. Now to create that poor this spleen has to work very hard, but it cannot understand the crazy, hectic personality. Every time it tries to cope with it, it goes crazy. So such a spleen becomes crazy and ultimately with some triggering on the left-hand side, you develop a horrible disease called as leukemia or blood cancer. Then also your intestinal problems, the pain in the stomach and all that, indigestion, all go hand in hand only because of one center only on the right side. I have not even described the left side center. So if I describe all these, then the whole Materia Medica will be described. It's like that. So all the permutations and combinations of these centers give you physical problems, then the left side gives you the mental problem. Jung called the left side the collective subconscious. This side of our psyche is very complex, and the effects it can have on our physical well-being are devastating. Because as it has been hypothesized in Sage Yoga that uh, there are uh, uh, seven main plexuses, and their functioning is dependent upon the individual's psychosocial behavior. This is an advancement in the understanding of psychosomatic medicine and human physiology. For the first time, it is possible to find the links uh, between the behavior and the disease. Because up till now, it was only uh, thought that stress can cause a variety of diseases from diabetes, hypertension, asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, etc., cancer even, but it was not known why a particular individual will get a particular disease. 
If you read, you see the uh, medical literature, you find people say that it is the psychological stress which is responsible for increasing incidence of hypertension in most of the Western countries, developing countries, as well as the developed countries. And we found by our first thesis, you see, which work was done, that this could be very important if a person practices Sahaja Yoga, the stress factor can be managed very nicely. Because all the parameters you see for testing, whether a person is in a state of stress, tension or anxiety, or he is in a relaxed state, were uh, done and we found that a person who did Sahaja Yoga only for 20 minutes a day, you see, in about three to four months' time, there were changes in the blood, there were changes in the heart, there were changes in the uh, electroencephalograph, there were changes in the muscle activity, uh, and the changes in the neurotransmitter. In the essential hypertension group, we had taken 25 female patients of a similar age group and socioeconomic status, and out of these 15 patients voluntarily consented to practice Sahaja Yoga while 10 patients acted as controls and these patients initially both the groups were on drugs also. The initial blood pressure in the Sahaja Yoga group was 169 by 109 millimeter of mercury and in the control group which it was 166 by 111 millimeter of mercury and as the study progressed for four months we observed that many of the patients gradually could be taken off their antihypertensive medication and at the end of four months all the patients in the Sahaja Yoga group uh, could be taken off their antihypertensive medication and their blood pressure had reached the level of 135 by 83 millimeter of mercury while the control group blood pressure remained at 167 by 111 millimeter of mercury uh, this shows that it is possible to treat these uh, this condition essential hypertension by practice of Sahaja Yoga and without taking medicines in my hospital Yes, I began to, uh, to use Sahaja Yoga in treatment of children and it's, it's so nice to see how it's possible to uh, resolve many questions, many problems. For instance, child of seven years and he had a big liver, one centimeters and a lot of problem with joints and could not, uh, doctors could not make correctly diagnosis. But when I feel which chakras was very effective, it was mostly um, Swadistan, Nabi and other. After first my cleaning, liver increased, decreased for four centimeters and then every day more one centimeter and now after 10 days he was absolutely well uh, he had a lot of uh, neurologic problem like tick like um, neurotic reaction and when he came back father couldn't recognize him he was like quietly without problem but of course we can't uh, introduce Sergio only in children. A mother has to be very, very with the children and the same. And uh, it's useful in other diseases. For instance, I uh, worked in a department of with intensive care and resuscitation. Sometimes I raise Kundalini children and a severe attack of bronchial asthma disappeared. And uh, many other cases. Now uh, I began uh, to with one uh, with one group in Sahaja Yoga in hospital with uh, doctors, nurses, and other people. During two, about two months, we began to start in a proper hospital, and it gives effect. I'm so happy that I stay in Sahaja Yoga, and every day thanks Shri Mataji. 
west of medicine has enhanced the quality of our life enormously and enabled us to experience hitherto unknown heights in medical efficiency. But in doing so, it has lost sight of the whole. By contrast, medical doctrines such as traditional Chinese medicine approach the human being as a whole personality. The emotional stability, mental attitude, spiritual requirement and also a sense of morality are considered in the traditional Chinese process of medical treatment. As a result, traditional Chinese medicine has a subtlety which Western medicine lacks. With this realization, we have tried to translate Chinese medicine into Western culture and into Western contexts. But in doing so, the foundations have largely been lost. The focus in Western medicine remains set upon the ailment and not upon the whole person or his subtle relationship with the universe. Much like Jung's anima and animas, the yin and yang represent the masculine and feminine, or right and left side of our psyche. The yang being the masculine, active right side, and the yin, the feminine, passive side. Viewed in the light of Sahaja Yoga, we can see how this parallels the subtle system. In Sahaja Yoga, Tao refers to the balancing of the right and left sides. When this balance is maintained, the healing energy is able to travel up the central channel to integrate and nourish all the energy centers and ultimately keep us in harmony with the balance of nature. Yes, we have two sides in our system of autonomous nervous system, left and right, which we call as left and right sympathetic nervous system. The left side caters for our emotions for our past, our desires. The right side caters for our action, physical and mental. If you indulge into one too much and go too far with it, you develop an imbalance within yourself. In the center lies the third power which we call as parasympathetic nervous system. This is the channel which is the central path of ascent. When the Kundalini rises through it, it brings you in the balance because it rises in the center of the system. So this is the minimum that happens that you develop your balance. In essence, it is the awakening of this feminine energy coiled and sleeping in our sacrum bone which nourishes and revives the subtle system. She is like the Mother Earth, or our own mother, soothing, nourishing, and sustaining. Her powers are both gentle and strong. She is the Kundalini, the very root of our existence. Within her lies the potential for us to become complete in the knowledge of ourselves. All right. What I try to show them, that this is the left side, this is the right side. This is the left sympathetic nervous system, say, and this is the right sympathetic nervous system. And really, spinal cord looks like this. And inside here is the spinal cord, which has the centers in it, the subtle centers. Now, when you start using the energy of these centers, say, too much on the right, and it starts moving more towards the right, and there's a constriction, and the power becomes less because you are exhausting, going more towards the right side. Suddenly something happens and from the left if there's a jerk, then the connection is completely broken. This is on its own, it starts working on its own. That's we can say that this has become malignant. Mm -hmm. I have no relationship with the whole to have the proportionate growth. So if the nose starts developing, it can cover your eyes and cover your mouth, everything. This is how a cancer is set in, or any other disease. So many psychosomatic diseases are nothing but somatic is from the right side, and when the psyche gives in, then it becomes a psychosomatic disease. There are so many diseases which are more psychosomatic than physical, and these we call them as incurable, 
can be easily cured by Kundalini awakening because when Kundalini passes through this, she just integrates them. For example, she is going like this, then she goes into this, integrates them. Just like she strings them mm. like pearls. pearls yeah. And so they are brought down. And also she nourishes that center. That's how people get cured. Automatically, by themselves, by their own power. Again, if we look at traditional Indian medicine, the purpose of Ayurvedic medicine was to integrate the mental, physical and spiritual well-being of the patient. The identification of three points of reference, bile, phlegm and wind, correspond in Sahaja Yoga to the manifestations of the right, left and central channels respectively. As you know that health is not only the absence of disease, but it is a state of complete physical, mental, emotional, social and spiritual well-being. Now, the spiritual aspect of health has been missed in modern medicine. It is not known, taught or practiced in modern medicine. Uh, this world, Kundalini, does not find uh, mention in the modern medical textbooks, but it was mentioned in and many ancient Indian medical textbooks of Ayurveda and many other religious text, uh, religious scriptures. There is this subtle power which is all pervading of God's love, which manifests all the things like living work, all nourishment, all balancing. It's so balanced. If the Pacific was slightly deeper than this, there would have been problems. If Himalaya was, say, one and a half times than what it is, there would have been problems. So everything is so balanced in nature, mm -hmm. which is a subtle energy all around us, which organizes us, uh, which nourishes us, does all the living work. Above all, it loves us. Yoga takes us back to this original desire and in practice fulfills it. In addressing the spiritual needs of the human being, Sahaja Yoga has the potential to bring a balance back into the West and back into Western medicine. The essence of Sahaja Yoga though is not to cure people. This is a side effect of the subtle system bringing itself into balance. At its core, Sahaja Yoga enables us to discover our true selves, the purpose of our being, and the true meaning of why we are here. The reason is, you have to now become the Spirit. Go beyond your physical, emotional, mental being, and become the Spirit. Because Spirit is the reflection of God Almighty and Spirit is the universal being within you. When you become the Spirit, you become a universal being. 